Hey there, this is Dallin Seeger with Dallin Seeger Codes, and welcome to episode 8 of Making a DAW in C Sharp. So we've been working with a lot of audio files. Uh, we've covered importing, we've covered recording and playing back, and uh, we're going to want to be uh, working with tracks soon and playing back multiple audio files at once and mixing them together and stuff like that. So we're going to want to make sure we have a some uh, organization going on with that. So uh, here in our main uh, constructor here, which is called when the app is opened, Let's go ahead and uh, create a method, and let's just call it, uh, I don't know, let's call it uh, create directory. And we haven't created this yet, so let's just scroll all the way down here, and let's uh, do this down here. So just like a lot of applications do, let's go ahead and store a folder in the app data folder uh, for a, let's name it uh, my da. I actually have one here that I've created already. Uh, let's go ahead and delete that. So we'll want to store uh, in here uh, in app data. Uh, well, technically you could store it anywhere, but it just makes sense to do it uh, in app data. We'll want to store a uh, folder that will contain all of the uh, data and files and stuff like that for our application and the stuff that you that the user has saved. So let's just copy this uh, path.combine here uh, so we don't have to type it out again. Let's go back down here, and uh, let's do string main folder. Let's set it equal to, let's just paste this in here. And so this will be, this is the path that combine. And instead of going to the desktop, I want to go to application data. And instead of demo.wave, want it to make a folder, which will just be, so we can just type in my DAW, or whatever your dot is named. Alright, so now we have that string set. So we want to check, first of all, yeah, so create directory. We we'll want to create that directory, but uh, we want to make sure it's not being overwritten. So let's make let's check uh, if uh, directory.exists main folder. Perfect. So if it uh, does not, sorry, exist, then we will want to create that folder. And then within that, let's go ahead and do uh, string projects, projects folder, projects folder. And we can just go ahead and reference uh, this path we already have here to our my DAW folder. So main folder, and then go ahead and do plus. And within this main folder, we can create a projects folder. And these slashes will be important to make sure it uh, goes actually within that folder. And we're also going to want to do the same to make sure if the directory exists. And if it does not exist, we will want to create it. And let's go ahead and test this out real quick. So when we open our application and we go to our app data folder, we can see that my DAW has appeared here as well as a projects folder. All right, so now we're going to want to allow the user to create projects and open projects. So to do that, when we open uh, our form, uh, we're going to want to create a little prompt. So let's actually go ahead and create a new form here. And let's just name this form open, opening prompt or something. And within this, uh, we can simply just add put my DAW there. And we can simply just add uh, two buttons in here. Uh, let's just have one be open and the other button we can have the text be new that will prompt a new uh, project. All right, let's just go ahead and rename these buttons to something more practical. All right, now let's go ahead and double click these to make them appear in our opening prompt uh, script here. All right, and we're going to want something to happen when we click either the uh, new project or open project buttons. Uh, but for now, let's head over to uh, main again, and let's go ahead and create a uh, public static string here because uh, there will only be one instance of this. And we can name this current project folder. So this string is just going to store the path to a project folder, which will be in the um, my DAW uh, projects in the app data um, on your system. And so this is just going to keep track of the current project folder. And we can go ahead and set this to null by default. And what we're also going to want to do is when we open 
the form currently it just goes straight to uh, as you can see it just goes straight to the the session here of, a, of the DAW. So we're actually going to want to have all of this uh, elsewhere. So we're not going to want to initialize all of this before the user has even selected or created a project. So let's go ahead and just cut this and let's just simply create a method down here called initialize session and we can put all of this uh, in here. Uh, so that includes uh, the allowing the user to select their input and output settings and everything else uh, to get ready to record. Uh, however, we are going to want to keep this initialized component and the create directory, of course, and uh, this null setting here. Uh, so when we first launch this application, we are going to want to uh, have access to this opening prompt, but we're not going to want to see the uh, main form. So there are actually a couple, we're not going to want to see this. So there are a couple ways to do this, but uh, I think work smart, not hard. So let's just set um, this dot opacity to zero, which is a little hack to have nothing. As you can see, nothing, no window will come up uh, when you open this. Um, so we can go ahead and do that. We don't need uh, this in there. And to get this opened up, let's just do opening prompt, opening prompt. There we go, and opening prompt dot show. And so now when we launch our application, it will just go ahead and give us this uh, open and new uh, setting here. So first let's go ahead and uh, choose what happens when you press this new button. So let's actually create yet again another form. Let's name this name new project, hit add. And in here, we're just going to want to add a text entry as well as an OK uh, button with that. All right, so I have some uh, buttons here and everything. And remember, design is going to be up to you. This is I'm just uh, making this uh, practical and not uh, pretty by any means. So let's just go ahead and double click these and create uh, these in uh, the script. Um, and under uh, events here, let's yeah, let's do um, text changed. Let's double click that. Perfect. All right, so we have these uh, event handlers here. And we're going to want to store what the text uh, in the text box is in a string. Just say current text box text. All right, and by default, we are going to want the OK button to be not enabled so that you can't uh, just press OK without any uh, input here. All right, so down here in the text change event handler, uh, we can set the current text box text to the uh, whatever the user has currently put in here and we can also just do if uh, name new text box dot text is not equal nothing then we can go ahead and uh, have that be set to that all right so assuming the user did not enter nothing uh, then the current text box text will be set to whatever the user entered and uh, you actually will probably want to do a separate event handler for this um, text box here. And I believe it is, uh, there is a uh, like on key press or a key press uh, event in here that you'll want to use. Uh, there's plenty of information online on how to do that, but you're just gonna want to uh, disallow certain characters such as space or something like that, uh, or whatever uh, characters you wouldn't want the folder to be named. Uh, we're not going to go over that. Uh, just be aware that, that is a, there's a little hole in that that you will need to address. And we're also going to want to enable that OK button here. But if there's nothing, then we will want to disable it again. And I guess if you hit cancel, then we can just do uh, this.hide. And we can set the, set the current text block text to... And when you hit cancel, that should take uh, care of everything uh, there. All right, so when you hit OK, we're going to want to create a folder. Uh, in the app data that is going to uh, be stored, of course, in this projects here based on the name that the user uh, entered in the text box. All right, and in the OK button, we're going to want to go ahead and once that's enabled, we're going to want to create the new project. So I'm just going to go over to main here in this create directory method we've created, and I'm just going to copy this. Uh, this is just the path to uh, the the uh, my DAW in the projects folder. So let's go ahead and go back uh, here. And let's just go ahead and paste this in. And we're gonna to want to do, it's gonna be my DAW slash projects. 
And uh, keep in mind with this, the user will have the ability to uh, obviously go into app data and sort of destroy uh, the folder in here and delete it. Uh, so um, there is a potential to break this. You may want to set up some fail safes or uh, if all is lost, you can just delete this entirely and it will recreate uh, when you open uh, open the application as we've uh, coded in here. All right, so uh, there is an error here. We can just go ahead and uh, add the using in here for a system.io. And sorry, add another slash here. And that should uh, open up to the, uh, that should uh, add the string to the projects uh, folder here. And we can just name this projects folder. And let's do string path to new new project equals projects folder plus and then slash plus current text box text plus slash and we're just going to want to do uh, directory create directory there we go and then now that we have this new project uh, we're going to want to open open the session or open the project. So we're going to want to set the current project folder in our main here to what we just made. And we're also going to want to call this initialize session. Uh, so what we can do here um, is since we're only ever going to have one project open at once, uh, we're only going to allow for that. We can just create a public static main, call it main. So we can just make a, a static reference to this main form here. And when we open our application, we can set main to this. So now we just have a static reference to that. So we can easily in here just do main dot. And since that's already static, we can just do current project folder. And, uh, Visual Studio has read our mind there. And then now we can do main dot main dot initialize session, which is the non-static method that we can just call from main here. Just it's a little easier. All right, perfect. So now all we need to do is tie uh, this uh, project name to the opening prompt design. So when you click to this uh, opening prompt here, that will appear when we first open the form. So we are going to want to go into the code here. And when you click new project button, we're going to want to do name new project, name new project, of course, just the syntax for uh, opening a new form and name new project dot show. All right, so let's go ahead and test this out. All right, so in here, as soon as we enter something, my project, okay, will appear. We can hit okay. And uh, we actually forgot to set the opacity, so we can do that in a second, but let's just make sure that uh, our Let's just make sure that uh, it appears. So let's go to my da projects, and sure enough, we have this my project here. And we will want to in the initialize session in main here. We will want to set the opacity back to 100 so that we will show the form again because it was hidden. And we will want to close uh, the prompt here for the name new project. And in the opening prompt, we are going to want to close uh, this when we open this. And then we're also if we uh, Sorry, we will put change this hide to close here as well. And we are going to want to uh, reopen. If we happen to uh, prematurely close the name new project, we are going to want to open the opening prompt again. So we can just do, uh, again, opening prompt. All right, so there we go. So let's go ahead and test this out here. And let's go ahead and press new. We can name it my project. And if we hit cancel, it will open this back up. If we hit new, let's do my project and hit OK. And then it will go ahead and open uh, a session here of our DAW. Um, and if we go into app data and we look for our DAW here and we go into projects, we see that this my project has gone ahead and appeared. So, and we can repeat that uh, as many times. So that has gone ahead and works. So now you, we can make a new project and it will store that project in the current project folder. So now all we need to do is set it up so that all audio files we record or import will be stored into that uh, project. And we also just need to allow the user to open 
uh, an existing project. All right, so that about does it for episode eight of making a DAW in C Sharp. Uh, in the next one, we're going to be covering file management part two, which will involve opening an existing project. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Thank you very much for watching. This has been Dallin Seeger Coates.